Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to Networking 101 at Sankalp. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, really excited to see so many people on this call. Apologies, um, we started a few minutes late. We were just getting uh, ready with our live stream uh, and <laughs> getting some stuff ready for you all. So my name is Arielle. I lead Sankalp in Africa. I've been with the team for about 10 years. So I am personally very, very excited for our 10th um, Africa Summit. So welcome to all of you. I will go through a few things that I really want to highlight for the summit that I think will make your experience really worthwhile. Sankalp can be overwhelming for first timers and for even seasoned uh, networkers. So the idea of this session is to really give you some sort of tips and tricks as to what to expect, how to make the most of your time, um, and just how to be really strategic about participating at Sankalp and making sure um, that those, those meetings are relevant and that you're uh, getting set up for success. So this session is um, being recorded, it is going to be live streamed. So if you want to share this with your colleagues or anyone else, um, you'll be able to share that from, from Facebook, I think, is where we're live streaming too. So, um, so yes, it'll be recorded. You can revisit it. Um, and we're going to go pretty quickly um, so that I have a lot of ground to cover and I want to make sure we get through as much as possible. So I will open it up to questions um, sort of towards the end. But if you have questions as we go, please feel free to put them in the chat. I would request my team that I'm here with um, Maggie and Ambika to help me field those questions as um, I might not uh, see all of them while I'm screen sharing. So if we are ready, I'm going to dive right in. Um, so we use an AI powered networking platform at Sankalp to really make sure that you're getting the best connections and the best recommendations of people to meet at the event. The platform is called Brella and you will get an invitation to join the platform tomorrow. We have not yet opened the networking platform. That networking platform will be open tomorrow, um, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek so that you can see what it'll look like um, and how you know how you can search for people and make the most of of that platform. So I'm going to dive right in here. Um, okay, great. So I hope you guys can see my screen, and I am going to toggle between a couple of different. Um, events so try i'm going to try not to uh <laughs> to get you guys lost uh too much but just bear with me this is i have logged into the networking platform here and the most important thing that you really want to start with within brella is your own profile so when you join it's going to give you some instructions about getting your profile set up i'll show you very quickly what it looks like um, it's it's pretty easy to do so. Um, I can can I can edit my introduction. There's a default that says something like, "Yeah, I'd love to meet new people at Sankalp," um, but I would recommend that you do do something personalized. You can mention here where you're from, what you're looking for, uh, who you want to meet at Sankalp. If you're exhibiting, it would be a great place to sort of um, put put a plug in that say, you know, come meet me at my exhibition space, um, and you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to give a shout out as to who you want to meet and why you're at Sankalp and what you're looking to achieve at Sankalp. I can edit my, my personal links here. So I have my LinkedIn, I have my organizational Twitter handle, I also have my organizational website. I have seen other people actually add their email addresses to these links. If you want people to be able to email you directly, that's up to you. So these are, these are customizable uh, links that you can decide uh, which, what information you want to put out there. And then the most powerful thing about Brella is it's going to ask you about your interest areas. So we have a lot of interest areas. They're grouped loosely by sector, um, but for investors and entrepreneurs, we also have investment ticket sizes, um, and asset classes, investment instruments that you can indicate if, for instance, you are a, an entrepreneur who's actually looking to raise investment. So within each of these, 
you can indicate what your goals are. So if you're just interested in networking about it, if you have an offer that you, you know, something that you're selling or something that you're interested in buying, whether you're looking to invest in this, whether you're an entrepreneur that's looking for investment in this sector, or whether you're looking for a job or recruiting. So I can, I'll pretend that maybe I'm an agri entrepreneur, so I'm looking for investment. And oops, sorry, I don't think I saved that. And let's see. And we can indicate that for any any of these. So um, let's see. Maybe I'm also interested. Let's say I'm maybe I'm raising for my. I'm looking for investment of maybe three hundred thousand dollars. So that's in this range. Um, I'm looking for debt. So I'll say debt, but you know, grants and cash prizes would also be nice. So I'll save those. And I'm also though interested in talent and team building. So I am um, I'm interested in that. Maybe I'm also interested in wildlife conservation and I just want to network about that because I think it's really important. So I'm going to save basically my profile so you can, I would really encourage you to take a look through all of the options that are here and, and really be very specific and intentional about what, um, what your interest areas are here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now what the system is going to do is it's actually going to pair me with and make recommendations with people who meet my um, my interest areas and my goals. So I'm going to switch quickly uh, back to an old event because there are more people here. Um, so all, as of right now, all I have done is is do, I have set up my own profile. Now the next step in the process is to look for other people. Now within the people tab, now I've jumped to a last year's event where there are a lot of people um, in the event. The, if I go to the people tab, the ones that are going to come up at the top of my list are the people that have been recommended to me. And I can see what they're interested in and what uh, interest areas we have in alignment. So I had wildlife conservation, I had ecosystem building. These are all sort of common areas um, that we have interest with. Now. Um, uh, and just request everybody to stay on mute um, and just use the chat for, for questions. And, and please, Maggie, interrupt me if there are questions that I should be answering as I go. Uh, otherwise, I'll sort of take them towards the end. Um, so you can, I would definitely take a look at the people who are recommended to you. You can click on any of them and see more information about their introduction. Again, like I can see here that Joan actually put her email address here, her website, so I can reach out and I can see what she was interested in here. Um, I can also chat with her. This event is over, but I'll get into meetings uh, momentarily. But so I can chat with her to set up a time, a time to connect. Um, I can also um, bookmark her. Um, if I wanted to come back to her, but I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit. The other really powerful thing is you can actually filter for people. So you can go out there and look for people who have a common interest area. So let's say I'm an entrepreneur and I'm looking for investors that are investing in agriculture, for example. So let me, um, I'm just gonna pick a couple of items here. And so I have picked some interests that are around agriculture. And then I can go even more narrow. And I, I want to see people who are investing in these sectors. So I'm going to select the goal as invest in this. And then let's see what we get. So there are 208 people at the event who are investing in the areas that I am I'm looking for. So I can, again, I can click on any of these profiles. I can chat, I can set a meeting with them. I could bookmark them for later if I wanted to. So the, the, the ability to search um, based on these interest areas and based on these intents is super, super powerful. I would also really recommend exhibitors, people who have exhibition space, whether, you know, that this is a great way to invite people to visit your exhibition space. Um, or if anyone on this, on this call has, has a session that they're hosting and you want to reach out to specific people and say, hey, I see that you're interested in this. We're having 
a session at this day, this time, we'd really love for you to come. This filtering mechanism is, is, is just really, um, really amazing. So do, do play around with it um, when you get in there. And um, again, it'll really, really help you be razor sharp focused on who you're meeting and why you're meeting with them. So I am going to hop back into um, the event uh, that's coming up. So sorry, I was in an old event. So some of those functionalities are not there. Now, when I find an individual that I want to meet, now there's only a handful of people in here because we haven't opened a platform yet. So it's pretty much just me and my team. Um, when you find someone you want to meet, you can set a meeting with them. And let me close this for now. So let's say Elsie, um, you know, we have, she seems like an interesting person that I want to connect with. I can chat with her. So I can just say, hey, Elsie, would love to meet. Meet about, about agri investments at Sankal. Yeah, so I can start chatting with her. I can also request a meeting with her. So the standard that we have set is about half an hour meeting. So you'll see each of these is 25 minutes. They're set for 25 minutes with, a with five minutes buffer in between. So I can see um, my schedule. And I can see that Elsie and I are both available at these times. If Elsie is not available or she has another meeting scheduled or she's in a session, for instance, she will, I'll be able to see what her actual available schedule is. So I would really encourage you to make sure that your personal schedule in Brella is up to date so that when people suggest meetings with you, um, you don't have so much back and forth in, in terms of timing and, and planning. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that briefly. So, um, you can also toggle between your schedule and the event schedule. Um, we haven't yet imported the event schedule in, in here yet. We're doing that tomorrow morning, but it's just helpful to be able to compare sort of your schedule versus what's happening um, broadly. So I can suggest a meeting with Elsie. Um, I can customize this. This is sort of the default. I'd love to meet, have a quick conversation. Um, I, can, um, I can customize this looking forward to seeing you at Sankop or whatever, talk about what you want to meet about, and I can send that meeting request. Now, once um, I can see up in the top right where my meeting requests are, um, once the individual confirms, um, and here I sent a meeting request to my other colleague, Margaret, we are automatically getting assigned to a meeting table. So, there are meeting tables one to 10 at the event. So Maggie and I got meeting table one um, and I booked that meeting for 1030 on the 1st of March. If you are an exhibitor or if you have a custom meeting table, um, you will have the option to request the meeting at your, at your private meeting table. And if you are meeting someone there, it will say specifically um, meet at the organization names booth. Um, so you'll the the sort of function to to sort of establish those pre-meeting areas is super super helpful. Um, so definitely do take a look at where you're you've been assigned to meet that individual. We're expecting between a thousand and twelve hundred people at Sun Cup because it'll be really hard to find that person in the crowd of of a thousand people. So do pay attention to the table assignments and the meeting points that, that you're assigned once that individual accepts the meeting. Um, I can also reschedule this meeting. I can cancel the meeting. Let's see if the map has been uploaded. It has. Um, so you can see we're still working on making this map look a little bit better, but you can actually see where the rooms are. You can see where the certain meeting points and exhibition spaces are. So if you're getting assigned uh, a meeting point, but you're not sure where it is, you can always just take a look um, at show, show map and you'll be able to find your way, find your way around uh, within the venue and where you're going. Um, so that's on setting meetings. I will just quickly show you the agenda. Um, and again, I'm going back to last year's event because we haven't yet imported um, the agenda. But what's helpful to really note here within the agenda are the filters on the side. So 
you can bookmark content if it's interesting to you. You can also toggle just between sessions or just between your meetings. Um, or you can have both sessions and meetings. So these are all the people that I have meetings lined up with at the event. So I'm gonna do sessions. You can also filter based on track and tag. So if you're interested in agriculture or if you're interested in climate change, all you have to do is toggle that and you'll see the sessions that are happening that are related to that specific sector. I know the Sankalp agenda can be a bit overwhelming. So um, these filters can really help you narrow down um, what topic areas you're looking you're looking to meet in? Um, so again, I would I would definitely encourage you to to explore that. Um, it might not work because I this event is over. But if you bookmark a session, sorry, I had already bookmarked that one. Close this. Uh, if you bookmark a session, usually it pops up and says, do you still want to be available? Um, I think because this event is over, it's not coming up. Do you want to be available for networking while you're attending this session? I would recommend that, that you block your availability if you're planning to attend a session so that when someone is looking at your schedule and proposing a meeting, um, you know they're not going to try and block uh, your time while you're participating in a session. So Again, we'll be importing the schedule tomorrow. So you'll see it once you get in the networking platform umbrella. So those are the big, um, those are the big interest areas for, for Brella that I wanted to highlight. So it, basically three steps. One, set your profile. Make sure you're indicating very clearly your interest areas and your intents uh, for the summit and make sure that your schedule is, is, is up to date. You can also within Brella modify what your availability is, again, so that people aren't blocking time. So if you're only attending um, you know, for a one day or you have a couple of sessions that you're going in, make sure that you're updating your schedule um, umbrella directly um, and, and, and that's all sort of part and parcel with your profile. Use the search functionality and the filter tools to search for people. Uh, look at the matches that, that Brella is recommending to you. That's a great place to start. But if you really wanna do some more focused um, searching, do use the filters and look for people specifically. And then set meetings. And remember that when you set those meetings, Brella is going to give you a meeting point, um, either one of the 10 tables uh, that we have, or you'll be meeting someone at their exhibition booth or at a private, private meeting table. So, and in case you're getting lost, just take a look at the map layout so that you can find your way around, around the venue. So that's on Brella. Uh, for those of you who are already registered um, for the summit, you might have received some additional communications. Um, let me just pull up. We have just published uh, the Sankalp Conference Ninja Guide. So for anyone, uh, we've published it on the website. Um, so it is there and maybe one of my colleagues can also put the link to the website um, in where you can download this. It's basically a guide, again, to help you make the most out of Sankalp. So it's, and, and a huge shout out to Andy Narakot who made the first uh, version of the Ninja Guide way back, I think in 2015 or 2016, we've updated it and revised it and made it more relevant um, for the upcoming conference. So uh, I would really encourage you all to take a look at this. Um, it's basically broken up into before, during, and after the summit. So. Um, you know, again, before, make sure you're setting your goals, uh, you know, what you really want to achieve, who you want to meet. Um, it's a really, really helpful resource just to, that gives very practical tips and tricks on how to make the most at Sankalp and how to connect with them. So again, we've just published this up on the website. So do take a look and, and use it. It's a really, really helpful resource for anyone looking to attend. One of the uh, recommendations in the Ninja Guide is to go beyond just attending the summit. Um, and I will pull up a couple, I'll, I'll touch base on a couple of things. So within, um, Within Sankalp itself, there are, Sankalp is the first and second of March, but there are a ton of sideline events that are happening. Um, they are published on our website. And I can quickly um, quickly show you where that is. Um, yes, I did. And 
uh, Maggie's just telling me I'm not screen sharing. I'm trying to pull up the page. So, sorry. Okay, just show you where to find this. Um, so under, under explore, um, we have the agenda, we have themes, partners. There's a tab called sideline events. Um, so we have a number of sideline events that are happening. So if you're interested in attending all of these, all of them have, you know, either links for more information or individuals that you can reach out to, um, to connect. So I would definitely encourage you to explore uh, the sideline events um, that's happening. And then we also, uh, for those of you who are already registered, you would have received an invitation to contribute to the unconference agenda uh, mural board. So we have two discussion zones that will be happening at Sankalp that are being curated by attendees themselves to really talk about the issues that are most important to them. So these are 60 minute sessions. They are intended to be discussion based. They are not intended to be soapboxes. There are no microphones. There are no podiums. They are not formal uh, sessions. They are discussion based. Um, so you have already received this link. If you're registered, if you're not registered, but you want to contribute, um, please reach out to, to either um, my, of my colleagues, Maggie or Ambika, who are on the call, uh, or Wendy, and they can they can share with you the link. Um, but basically, you just take a post-it note and you add whatever you want to talk about, the title, a description, and who it's hosted by. We can see um, Value for Women has already added something. Yali looks like they're working on their description. Um, looks like Affex also has, has something, but maybe they're working on the description. I think uh, this is Africa... Uh, Eats is hosting something. So we can already see it's actually filling up. KCV has hosted something. So it's it's already filling up. So once this fills up, we're, we that's it. Um, so it looks like day two is very popular. Day one still has a lot of um, a lot of options. So again, really would encourage you. This is a great way to connect with people that are aligned, you know, aligned in a specific work. Um, if you know you're hosting a conversation around gender lens investing, for example, or around youth leadership, um, it's a great way to to generate conversation with like-minded partners um, in those sectors or in those spaces. We expect probably between 20 and 30 people at each discussion zone. Um, and again, these are really opportunities for for conversation, for collaboration, and for dialogue. Um, not um, you know, not formal presentations in any sense. So um, the person who's signing up for it is really responsible for um, mobilizing that conversation and, and moderating the discussion with the attendees who are there. Um, and then the last thing that I will mention, and I think I can stop screen sharing, is that we are putting together some roadmaps these roadmaps will be specific for uh, entrepreneurs and there will be a roadmap that's specific for investors. So these are basically highlighting sessions that we think are really relevant for those specific stakeholders. So there are so many awesome sessions for entrepreneurs. There are master classes. There's sessions on uh, you know, how to ask for investment. There are legal master classes on, on the investment raising process. There are just a ton, a ton of uh, brilliant resources and sessions that you'll be able to, um, to sort of map out to make the most of your time at Sankalp. And similarly for investors or entrepreneur support incubators, um, we'll have a roadmap for those as well that are really highlighting uh, sessions where you can interact with entrepreneurs, get pipeline, sort of get your finger on the pulse of what's happening and what some of the up and coming promising entrepreneurs are doing um, across various sectors um, across the continent. So keep an eye out for the roadmaps. I think the investor one was already emailed to registered attendees yesterday, but we will be publishing those on our website as well. Um, so do just take a look at, um, at the event website for, for the most up-to-date information. And I will just give a shout out to the parents out there. Uh, we do have daycare at Sankalp. If you need space either for nursing, uh, for moms who are breastfeeding, we have a breastfeeding room. And if you are bringing your children to Sankalp, we need to know so that we have food and games and play for them. Uh, and we have a good uh, sort of uh, student teacher ratio. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to my colleague Elsie, who is, uh, and Wendy who are both managing daycare. So in case anyone needs that assistance, we need to know in advance, please don't show up with your child uh, unannounced. That would be uh, put us in a tight spot. So we wanna make sure we have enough uh, coverage for all the kiddos that are coming. So that is 
everything on my list. I don't know if I forgot anything, but we can um, we can go to questions. I yes. Uh, so the question around organizational profile versus personal profile. Excellent question. They are different. So the or the, so if you are an exhibitor or if you have a private meeting point. Um, you will have your organizational profile that you need to build. So that will enable you to have the feature to say meet at my specific space. So that is for the organization. When you receive your Brella link tomorrow, and I can see someone has asked also, have you sent the Brella link? The Brella invitation links will go out tomorrow. So we have not yet set them. That will prompt you to create your personal profile link, which indeed is different from your organizational profile link. So they are two different things. Um, if you are filling out an organizational profile, you will have to still fill out your personal um, personal profile that's, that's, that's unique to you and that's specific to your interest areas. Um, and I can see there were a couple of questions around when it will be available. Yes, so again, uh, invites to the networking platform will be sent tomorrow only to registered attendees. If you have not registered, if you do not have a ticket, you will not get your link tomorrow. So if for whatever reason you haven't registered, please, please, please do so today by the end of the day. Um, and we'll start sending those invitations out tomorrow. So again, would really encourage you to fill out the, those profiles, start networking right away. Um, and I saw another couple of questions uh, around the recording. Yes, we are live streaming, we are recording. You can share this session with your colleagues, your friends, people you think which come to Sankop. Um, it'll be on our Facebook page. Um, so you can always access it there and share share the link. Um, is the, yes, okay, so, Freja is asking if there's a template um, to provide personal or organizational profiles. Um, Brella, uh, the Brella website does have some really helpful tips and tricks. So if you go to brella.io, they have a really helpful help desk um, that has a lot of really useful resources for attendees and for exhibitors. So if you're an exhibitor, there's a lot of helpful instruction and guidance there. Um, and if you're an attendee, there's a lot of additional resources there also in terms of how to make the most of, of your personal profile, um, et cetera. But, um, my honest recommendation would be, um, especially for your personal profile, be honest, be very clear about who you want to meet, why you're, be, why you're coming to Sankalp, um, and be very specific about that so that you are really, um, that you're, you're showing up in, in other people's searches as well, because just like you might be filtering and searching for other people and looking at those recommendations, it's a two-way street. So as long as your personal profile is accurate, it's reflecting what you want to achieve, who you want to meet, what you're looking to do at Sankalp, um, then you can really rely very heavily um, on, on the AI matchmaking that will be happening in the back end. Um, I see Shirley is asking about the Female Founder Showcase. Shirley, my colleague, uh, Pramit, who's running the Female Founder Showcase, will reach out to you um, specifically to get you prepared um, for, for the showcase. So uh, Shirley, we, we can chat about that offline uh, and my colleague Pramit will reach out to you if you haven't already spoken to him. Someone else asked about, um, I bet that you increase the visibility that you can see them. Um, okay, so there was a question about the about the uh, applying to the deal rooms. I think we are oversubscribed for the deal rooms. I know we had far more applications than um, we could accommodate. So those forms are unfortunately closed. Um, so if if you are participating in the deal room, uh, I know again my colleague Pramit, who's running those, will be able to reach out to you with with specific logistic items. Um, but unfortunately, that we have closed. Uh, we have closed those applications just due to the time frame. Um, or what about a week from the summit or so? So apologies for that. But um, there's still plenty of opportunities to network, to get engaged, to meet investors. So um, don't don't let that uh, sort of keep you from from networking like a pro at Sankop. So please do um, try and set up meetings with with those investors um, and make sure that you know, you have relevant materials uh, ready, like your pitch deck or your investment memorandum, et cetera, that you can share with them. Um, 
our entrepreneur tickets charged per organization or per person? So every ticket is uh, per person, Limo. So thank you for the question. So um, because each individual will have to set up their personal profile. So each ticket is for an individual participating um, in the summit. So one ticket is is one person. Uh, we did have some promotions running where we had some bulk ticket sales. If you want to bring a couple people from your team, um, and you know you you want to consider bringing more people, um, and are are looking for for some bulk discounts, my colleague Maggie and Elsie can sort you out um, on that. Uh, if you're looking for to bring a bunch of members from your team and you want to save some. Um, some money on that front. I will also mention that registrations are closing on February 25th. So you have four days left to register. Um, if you do not register before the 25th, um, it's not the end of the world, um, but you will have fairly long queues if you need to pay on site uh, at registration. So um, you don't wanna be held up uh, and held back from networking. So the more you can get done in advance, please do so. So registrations will be closing on February 25th. I believe that's a Saturday, um, that's a Saturday. So you have the rest of the week uh, to book your ticket. And um, once you do so, you'll get added to the Brella platform for, for networking. So, um, and I would really recommend you start networking um, and can, making those meetings as early as possible because people's calendars do very much fill up during Sankalp. Uh, Belinda, my, my, sorry, I'm just seeing uh, the sideline events and the ninja guide. So my colleagues have put the link to the sideline event uh, in the chat here. And they also put the link to the ninja guide, I think on the website. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe Maggie, if you can just put the link to the event website on, um, on here, everything is on the event website. So we'll we'll just put that in the chat. The Ninja Guide is there. The sideline events are there. Um, everything is there except the mural. Only if you're registered on conference uh, agenda mural, you'll only get that um, if you're a ticket holder. Um, and there was sorry, there was a question about um, transferable. I Edward, I'm not sure what. Uh, Okay, so I, I, Edward, I'm not sure which advertisement you saw. Um, tickets are 100% transferable if you are unable to attend and want to nominate another organization member to come. However, you cannot share a ticket uh, within your organ. Like, I can't register for me and then give my badge to Maggie. It doesn't work like that um, because the unique profile is unique to me. So, and those... Um, those networking links, it is a custom URL. So I can't share mine with anyone else. So one ticket, one person, we currently, we don't have day passes and we do not have transferable tickets. The transferable tickets are in the instance of where you know you cannot attend because something came up and you need to transfer your entire ticket to another individual that we can definitely um, definitely help sort you out. If you do need, um, to change your registration or transfer your ticket to a colleague, please reach out to my uh, my colleague Elsie, who is handling our registrations. Um, I hope I hope I answered that question. And thank you. Um, one of my team members put the event website here in the chat, so uh, everything is is uh, is there on the chat. We also have a ton of FAQs. Um, if there are questions around where to stay, if you need assistance with uh, visas for anyone who is traveling in, please do remember that Kenya no longer issues visa on arrival. You do need to apply in advance. We can give you everything you need. Um, uh, again, that's in the FAQ session section of the website. My colleague Diana is handling all visa requests, and she is very prompt and very efficient. Um, so, if you need uh, if you need any of that visa documentation, please also reach out to to her. Um, so, we want to make sure that nobody gets stuck at immigration. Um, and are there any other questions or from the team here, anything else that I might have missed? Um, great, well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, sorry, there's a fly. But please, um, really looking forward to seeing you at Sankal. Please do early, you know, get, get on the bandwagon early. Um, start setting up your profile, networking, setting up those meetings in advance. Take a look at the unconference uh, agenda discussion zones, contribute your ideas, plan 
uh, you know, strategize about who you want to meet at Sankalp and why, what you're looking to achieve. Really spend some honest, uh, reflective time with yourself in terms of what, um, what you're going there for and what success looks like for you so that by the time you're setting up those meetings, you're really, really being efficient with those two days at Sankalp. Um, it's great to meet people in the coffee line at Pete's, but sometimes, um, you know, we can't rely 100% on serendipity. So do be very intentional about who you're meeting, um, why you're meeting them, and be, you know, have a great time. Uh, get excited. Don't get overwhelmed. I know Sankalp is a lot, uh, a lot to take in, um, but it's a really awesome opportunity um, to network in this space, to learn, to share, um, to grow. And we look forward to seeing all of you there next week in about seven days. Um, thank you so much, Andrew. Woo, big shout out to the team. Uh, they're doing an awesome job planning. Uh, and they are, I know if we could do an IV of caffeine, we would all be uh, running on that. So uh, thank you, Andrew. Well, <laughs> um, Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Please, again, feel free to share the recording, the live stream with your colleagues or other people that you know are attending. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to the team um, or Sankop Forum at IntelliCap.net. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. We'll just put that in the chat. Um, you got it? Okay. Um, so in case, um, Cynthia, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to share the recording by email, but I'll let one of my other colleagues take that up. Um, but yes, if, if you registered, we'll be able to share it um, and we'll share the link to the live stream. So thank you everyone and have an awesome Sankalp. We'll see you in a week at the Kenya School of Monetary Studies. <laughs>